What's going on there, guys? Good afternoon. Good morning. It is the Earthmaster here on this finally Friday, December 9th, 2022. It's about 11.26 a.m. California time here. And latest quake shows a 3.6 earthquake there on the Earthquake 3D globe. Looks like uh, in the Indonesia area where we've been seeing quite a bit of uptick uh, over the last 24 hours. Pretty good cluster of movement across the Java Trench. Also, the webcam there for Mauna Loa is currently active. I don't know how long it's going to be, but uh, they have uh, made some adjustments, and it looks pretty active right now as far as the um, stability of the live stream goes. <clears throat> but notice, it uh, looks like a little bit of declining there on the flow of lava. All right, let's go ahead and check that activity out here on the USGS map. I'm going to go check out the um, Volcano Hazards Network and see what we have for the latest info on Mauna Loa. And as of right now, let's check out this update this morning put out about 8.51 Hawaii time, Northeast Rift Zone eruption continues. Uh, Fissure 3 vent continues to erupt with a reduced supply of lava and reduced gas emissions this morning. So we noticed that there on the webcam those fountains of lava are not shooting out, spewing up into the sky hundreds of feet like they were uh, in previous days since the eruption began back on the uh, the 27th of November. So things are uh, pretty slow. Uh, they're calming down. As of 7 a.m. today, uh, activity at the F3, Fisher 3 vent, is significantly reduced, uh, producing low fountains that feed lava flows extending only about 1.2 miles from the vent. Uh, the channels below this point appear drained of lava and probably no longer feed the main front uh, the flow up front uh, the main flow that was headed towards the daniel k highway uh, looks like that has stopped the inactive main flow front remains stalled at 1.7 miles from the highway so wow crazy uh, sulfur dioxide emission rates were also reduced to approximately 30,000 tons per day compared to the 130,000 that we had seen uh, in the days past there with a, uh, uh, a, a lot going on at Fisher 3. But now things are kind of calming down. Tremor, uh, it's a signal associated with subsurface fluid movement, continues beneath the current active fissure. Uh, this indicates that magma is still being supplied to the fissure and activity is likely to continue as long as we see this signal. Uh, the significance of the reduced supply of lava is not yet clear. It is common for eruptions to wax and wane or pause completely. A, a return to high levels of dis lava discharge could occur, and the Hawaiian Volcano, Volcano Observatory continues to closely monitor this activity. So, um, I mentioned last night the possibility of seeing maybe a blockage or some type of uh, uh, explosive event from Mauna Loa, which is a possibility. The last one was back in 1843. Uh, where it was shooting out some uh, large boulders and rocks. Um, and so I'm kind of keeping an eye on this. I don't know if maybe the flow is stopped down there uh, or blocked somehow. Uh, the Ho Hawaiian Volcano um, folks there, they're going to be doing a live, I think, question and answer show here a little bit later this afternoon on Facebook and local uh, TV networks there on the big island. Uh, so I'm going to see if I could jump in there and ask him that question about uh, could this be a blockage? And if uh, if so, could we see an eruption or eruptive explosive type um, deal? Most of the time here with Mauna Loa, things just kind of spew out. Uh, we don't see that eruption uh, or explosive type uh, event common. It's not very common, but it does happen. Last one again was back in 18. Uh, 43 time period so a couple multimedia images here um, of course the live stream is up and running there is a current still shot um, from one of the webcams there at Fisher 3 uh, before this was spewing up way up into the air and creating these little um, new land features out here of cooled lava um, but now just barely any noticeable uh, activity there from the event, the Fisher 3 area. So we'll just continue to monitor it and um, report back if anything 
major changes. Either way, it's kind of a new development right there uh, with the slowing down of activity. Notice earthquake activity, though, has dropped off significantly there at Mauna Loa. Uh, so we'll watch that here in the coming hours and days for uh, potentially a uh, forward event. Um, you know, whether it continues to erupt or not, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Most of the activity around Pahala today. Let's see, what do we got for activity? We are noticing a little bit of earthquake movement uh, and uptick across the area of the Sea of Osk region, 4.2. This is a pretty significant deep, well, it's not a large earthquake, but it's definitely deep way down there uh, into the areas of Kuril Kamchaka Trench, way underneath the zone. Uh, so we got to watch this area here closely for some potential movement upstream in the locked areas uh, in the stress built up zones. And I know this area is stressed out because we really haven't seen any major earthquake activity on it in a little while. So this is one of my main priority watch zones. When we see this deeper earthquake activity, that's only adding further stress upstream. I uh, did have a couple earthquakes last night further south around the uh, Japan area. Those earthquakes deep as well into the portions of the Japan Trench. 245 kilometers deep for a 4.1 and uh, 200 kilometers deep for a 4.2. Now here's that cluster of earthquakes occurring. We've seen on Earthquake 3D Globe quite a few threes building up in this region some of the smaller quakes of course not showing up here on this usgs map but the 4.5 or 4.0 and above is and uh, that's where we're seeing the majority of the uptick today along portions of the philippine trench and up here just north of the uh, bosco philippines area 43 kilometers deep for a 4.9 coming in just after midnight some of these other quakes within the region and papua new guinea area all from the this morning time period so things definitely kicking up again on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Let me show you guys a uh, pretty good cluster of movement throughout this area. Twos and threes uh, working their way across this plate boundary. And that's kind of the typical migration and buildup area uh, in this zone. Uh, so we'll watch for potentially some further large scale activity in that uh, region. The 4.4 up north looks like north of, uh, well, it's just right around the uh, Myanmar area. Um, outside of India, 4.495 kilometers uh, deep. So watch this zone. This is kind of a definitely a, a zone to watch here today. All right, uh, further down south into the Tonga and Kermadec Trench. Notice things are awfully quiet currently down there. And a look at the map here. Looks like there's a little bit of activity uh, around North Island, New Zealand, and one earthquake up along the Kermadec Trench. But those, uh, yeah, they look fairly new. Not showing up on the USGS map, though. We're missing one 4.6. But uh, minimal activity today in this area. Down on the South Sandwich Islands area, seen a 4.9 coming up just uh, an hour or so ago. Um, had a 5.1 yesterday, but the 4.9, the more recent one, a little bit further south here along the area, 72 kilometers deep as well into that zone. Mid-Atlantic Ridge has been seeing some activity. Uh, of course, that does kind of reamp uh, everything uh, and also increases some activity uh, around the southern portion here, around where we're seeing it today uh, in the uh, uh, South Sandwich Islands area. Mid-Atlantic Ridge seen a 5.2 early this morning and also some activity last night up north in the northern Mid-Atlantic Ridge uh, things starting to kick back up out there in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, into the Chile area, uh, outside of, well, that's way, that's going to be that one out in the Atlantic. There we go. Looks like uh, most of this activity from yesterday. One just after midnight of 4.6 here, pretty shallow into the uh, this little fracture zone out here. Um, let me check out the Earthquake 3D globe here and see what we got for microquakes there's not a whole lot um, of buildup as far as smaller quakes go in this area looks like there's a 4.0 3.1 and a 5.0 in that area um usgs um well that's from yesterday so it looks like they're missing a couple quakes down here as well in that region let's check out the states here see what we have one oklahoma earthquake uh, 1.9, 7.7 kilometers here. 
within this zone, uh, out, well outside of Woodward to the east. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, we were having a little bit of activity last night as uh, far as some microquakes, but it looks like that has died off almost completely uh, since we've seen those very small microquakes pop off. Things are relatively calm there across the Wyoming region. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity currently showing up there in Yellowstone. Pacific Northwest, about the same. Really haven't seen too many uh, earthquakes pop off there. Uh, into the Northern California area, seen a little bit of movement last night and also early this morning. 1.9 um, and a 2.5. This one down at the southern end of the Cascadia Megathrust, about 12 kilometers deep. Uh, trimmer activity last night was, uh, let's check it out here and see what we got. Zero epicenters. Um, hmm. I'm going to go back to previous day. 50, yeah, doesn't look like they're reporting anything for uh, yesterday's time frame. All right, uh, where'd my other map go? I got too many windows open here. Uh, the rest of California, some spotty activity across the Bay Area, just south of Salinas. Uh, not seeing any really any major uptick, any major swarm uh, activity. 2.5 map shows one earthquake down here, just off the southern branch here of the Elsinore Fault System. Here, uh, it looks like a 2.6, 7 kilometers deep. Into Coyote Mountains. There's that 2.6 there from yesterday on the San Andreas Fault. But overall, seismic activity looks like it's kind of uh, on the quiet side for the most part for California. Uh, Nevada, still seeing some movement across the land there. And up into northern Nevada in the swarming area. Still seeing a couple earthquakes here since midnight. A couple ones uh, kicking off here in this earthquake swarm. Just kind of keeping an eye on that. Uh, let's see, not, not a whole lot going on across the eastern portion of the country. Alaska, uh, this area up here is lighting up a little bit uh, around the Cook Inlet area. 3.3 coming in, 1.1 kilometers deep, pretty shallow earthquake through the region, just outside of Anchorage, and uh, some general typical regional earthquake activity. This is all pretty standard and average for movement up here into Alaska. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, let's check out the solar ham site here. And notice we're starting to crackle and pop a little bit uh, with some flaring. Um, pretty good uptrend here, so to speak, of some popcorn. I like to call it popcorn because it's basically these flares sizzling up a little bit, getting ready to possibly produce an M flare. Um, with this type of level, we could see maybe an, a moderate M flare, even a large one with this type of setup. Um, and I believe this is coming from these sunspots that are currently facing us. 3153 has uh, advanced a little bit. This is going to be this massive sunspot down here. It is kind of currently facing away from the Earth, but anything that does pop off here could be geo-effective in the coming hours. Um, and also this regional sunspot up here. Things are looking a little bit more advanced uh, for the uh, instability of that structure. So we got 3157 and 3153, the ones I just showed you, uh, with the highest probability there of seeing any type of uh, uh, significant flaring. Uh, no major coronal holes facing us, no major space weather events expected yet. Uh, but again, keep an eye on a couple of these sunspots as they uh, are within position of blasting off um, or directed activity. And with this uptick right now, I think we need to be on guard. 85% chance for a C flare, 20% chance for an M flare, and 1% for X flare. But uh, we're definitely already into the C flare category. That's why I'm saying it's kind of crackling like popcorn here. Just when they lower the threat, things go up. It never fails. Um, so watch us potentially here for an M flare uh, throughout the day today. Have a good day, folks. We'll catch you guys a little bit later on. I got a pretty busy Friday. We'll catch you guys a little bit later on tonight with the update for now. Live stream is up and running and live webcam view of Fisher 3 with minimal uh, activity currently happening there. But uh, again, keep a close eye on it and uh, we'll see how it plays out here in the coming hours and days. 
Take care, folks. We'll catch you guys a little bit later on.